Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about how to care for your fine knits. This is a video that I've been promising my longtime viewers uh, for a very long time since uh, I think this past December uh, during Mishmas. So I'm doing it now, which hopefully is a good time for most of you out there. You're probably changing up your wardrobe a little bit. We're moving from winter into spring, at least for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. So I thought now was a good time to talk about um, how to care for your fine knits. And when I say care, I mean being able to hand wash your fine knits at home instead of dry cleaning them. I'm also gonna talk very briefly about how to remove pilling and also how to store your knits. So I would say 90% of this video is gonna be about how you can hand wash your knits at home instead of dry cleaning them. It's my preference even though it is more time consuming and it is uh, kind of like a one at a time <laughs> deal for me. So there's nothing wrong with dry cleaning. If for whatever reason you go through this entire video and you're like, wow, that seems like such a pain in the ass. I would rather dry clean then by all means, there's nothing wrong with dry cleaning, but I prefer to kind of pamper my knits a little bit. And the reason why I'm talking about this particular topic is because I used to be a hand knitwear designer and it's something that I did before I started doing YouTube full time. And I've dealt with a lot of different fibers. I've had to hand wash all of them. Um, I've had to uh, deal with a lot of different uh, fibers and yarns and fabrics uh, over my years. So um, I have a little bit of a passion for this and many of you have expressed interest in this topic and also have requested this from me. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let me also define fine knits. And what I mean by fine knits is uh, basically an animal fiber knit. So uh, generally that would be wool uh, and that would be cashmere. Of course, there's also yak out there. There's uh, angora, which doesn't really fall into this category because uh, rabbits have fur and not hair. It's like a little bit different. And, uh, you know, musk ox, which I think is very rare <laughs> um, in the production arena. In hand knitwear, uh, you can actually buy musk ox yarn, which is very, very lovely. Anyway, uh, I'm going off on a tangent. So uh, that's what I consider fine knits. Uh, not fine knits, you know, cottons or synthetics. I don't consider those fine knits. Um, and those I would definitely just follow the care instructions for. Uh, most likely they're, you know, wash on cold, lay flat to dry. Um, that's probably what you have to do for cottons. Maybe some synthetics uh, you have to dry clean, but again, I would just follow the care instructions for those sweaters. So again, we're gonna be talking about wool and cashmere predominantly. And what you will notice on, I would say, probably all of uh, those knitted pieces is that they recommend dry clean only. And the reason why they recommend dry clean only is because you run the risk of felting, accidentally felting your uh, knitted piece. And I don't know if you guys have ever done this by accident. Uh, you, maybe you've thrown a wool sweater into the wash, either by accident and got caught up with the rest of your laundry, or you thought, I'm just gonna wash this, I don't wanna dry clean it. And you've thrown it in and it's turned into like a shrunken down, uh, stiff <laughs> piece of garment. Actually, I have wool clogs on. So this is wool felt. And this is what happens to wool and to cashmere and to other um, animal fibers if you introduce three things, which is moisture, heat, and agitation. So if you ever want to purposefully felt wool, what you want to do is do exactly that. Add some water, add some heat to it, and then agitate it. When I did um, design knitwear, sometimes we wanted a felted piece of fabric. And so what we do is like knit something up very loosely and then throw it in the washer and the dryer and it would felt up. So that is what manufacturers are afraid you're going to do, not on purpose, but by accident. So that's why they always say dry clean only. It's just a CYA situation, a covering their ass situation, and it's just uh, safer for everyone involved. Let's just talk about uh, fibers a little bit and why they felt and why like cottons and synthetics don't felt. So uh, wools and cashmeres, much like our hair, much like our natural bristled makeup brushes, um, they have little scales on uh, along the fiber. So, you know, basically when you agitate it, when you add heat and everything, those scales will kind of lift up and then they'll grab onto each other. And that's how you end up with that kind of felted effect. So basically what you want to do is make sure that you're not introducing all three elements of moisture, heat, and agitation um, to any kind of knitwear if you don't want to felt it. 
And something I just want to mention here, this is a little bit of a sidebar. This isn't so much about um, how to hand wash your knits, but I did want to talk a little bit about fine knits and how, you know, quote unquote, fine knits are categorized. So fibers are measured by diameter in microns. Stay with me. So um, the smaller the number, the finer the hair. So cashmere has a micron count of 19 or less. Wools are somewhere in that range between 15 and 22 or 25, I would say, um, for garments. Um, and so the smaller the number, the finer, the smaller the diameter of the fiber is, and that means it's softer. Now, the finer and the softer the fiber is, the more easily it's going to break. So that is why very high quality fine knits um, don't pill that easily. They don't have that fuzzy halo to it. And it's because a lot of the shorter hairs have become waste. They've been pulled out and only the longer hairs have been kept into the production. So that sort of explains like the very wide range of pricing that you can see. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into pricing in terms of, you know, quantities ordered and manufactured and who you're using as a manufacturer, et cetera, et cetera. But generally, if you're buying a less expensive cashmere or wool piece, it's going to pill, it's going to look very fuzzy, it's going to look very uh, sloppy, if you will, very quickly because a lot of the shorter fibers have been kept in during the production. But let's say you buy a very expensive piece of cashmere knitwear, essentially the idea is all of the longer hairs have been kept, all of the shorter ones have been put aside, and only the longer hairs have been used in manufacturing. So you can imagine how much more expensive that is, how much more waste there is, um, but those should look pretty pristine for a much longer amount of time. And I do wanna mention, you know, a lot of people, they think wool is so scratchy and cashmere is so soft, but there are wools that have a micron count smaller than some cashmere's out there. Merino wools especially can be very, very fine and feel just as soft as cashmere. So you definitely want to um, kind of check out these pieces on your own. You definitely want to wear them and see the quality and you'll probably fall in love with particular manufacturers and fall out of love with some other uh, manufacturers. So anyway, that's just an aside and that's something I'll mention again when we talk about pilling and things like that. Okay, so how to hand wash your knits. What you want to do is is grab a basin or use a sink that you won't need maybe overnight. Um, I use this white Rubbermaid plastic bin that I got, I think at Walmart or Target, very inexpensive. Um, I have a whole bunch of them <laughs> because of my knit design days. Anyway, what I use as an example is one of my eyelet scarves. Uh, this was part of my merchandise line. It has since sold out. Thank you guys very much. It has since sold out, and uh, I don't think I'll be putting these back into production, but we'll see. Uh, these are made in Italy, and these are 70% wool, 30% cashmere, and this is the freshly washed one. So the process is you basically want to submerge your knitted piece in some cool water. It doesn't have to be freezing cold, uh, but something a little bit cooler than just warm. Filling it up with some cool water, and then what you want to add into this uh, mixture is some detergent. I think wool light is probably the first detergent that comes into mind for everyone. This is fine. I, <laughs> I love my um, Aqua Universalis detergent for bright colors. It's more gentle than the one for white colors. There are two different kinds. Um, so I use the one for bright colors. Now both of these you need to rinse um, and that's an extra step. Um, but I do want to mention, and I don't have any, I apologize because uh, I used it all, um, is you can use like a wool wash or wool soak and those detergents don't require any rinsing. So those are very, very handy. They're very effective um, and you don't have to rinse them. So it gets rid of one step. And I'll leave a link to some really good ones or ones that I've used and really enjoyed in the past down below in my description box. Uh, but one is called Soak, one is called Eucalyn, um, Quince and Co, which is a yarn company, they have their own version of like a wool soak. So if this is something you get into and you really like kind of taking care of your knitwear, um, you may want to invest in a bottle of that. Not that it's expensive, but uh, it is nice not to have to rinse out. And in fact, I'm thinking about <laughs> getting another bottle uh, to wash up some of my other knits. If this is the first time you're doing this, I would recommend just doing one piece. And with that in mind, just use just a bit of detergent. You don't need a ton. I mean, unless for whatever reason, you know, your piece is like much 
mud covered or something. But if it's just something you've been wearing, like a cardigan, you've been wearing over things or whatever, and you just want to like clean it up a little, you don't need a ton of detergent. So now what I'm doing is I'm just uh, pressing the knit down into the water. I want the fibers to really soak up the moisture um, because I really want to wash it. So I'm pressing it down and you can see it kind of keeps floating up a little bit. So if you continue kind of keeping it submerged, it will eventually soak up a lot of water and it won't rise up. And that's basically when I stop, you know, pressing it down. And then what I like to do is just let it sit overnight. So I don't know, I guess I would say uh, 12 hours or so, I let it soak. It takes a lot longer than you think for all of the moisture to really penetrate all of the fiber. Is overnight kind of excessive? I don't know. I mean, I've left knits in a wet basin for, you know, probably more than one day. Um, if I've been in a rush, I've left it in there for maybe three or four hours, but you definitely want to leave it in there for a good amount of time. And so I just suggest overnight, you can just start soaking it before you go to bed. And then when you wake up, you can kind of continue the process. So because I used a detergent that needs to be rinsed, I poured out all of the you know, dirty laundry water. I poured all of that out and then I just fill up the basin with uh, some clean water. And you know, I squeezed some of the excess out of the scarf. I kind of rinsed out the basin a little bit and then I filled it up with some clean water and uh, I let it soak again overnight. I'm a really big overnight soaker. So I did it again overnight and then the next morning I basically, um, kind of poured out that water and I started to um, get as much of the moisture out of the knitted piece as possible. So this is a really important step. You definitely want to remove as much of the moisture out of the, the knitted piece as possible. Um, yet, you don't want to wring it, you don't want to introduce too much agitation to the whole process. So I just like pressing it. I like press it against the basin. Um, I squeeze it, but I don't, I don't do this. I don't you know, I don't do any agitation. I'll just squeeze and squeeze and press and squeeze. And I'll do that until, you know, I feel like I basically have gotten as much water out of it as possible. So at this point, what you want to do is lay down some towels. Um, I highly recommend white towels. You don't want, for whatever reason, you don't want any color transfer. Like if you have a navy blue or black towel or something, you don't want to accidentally transfer any of the dye from the towel into uh, your knitwear. So some white towels or some very, very old towels where you know there's absolutely no dye left. Uh, but white towels, I definitely recommend. I'm laying down two white towels here because my scarf is very long. If you have like a very chunky, like long sleeve sweater, you may wanna lay the towels out side by side to kind of compensate for the sleeves. But basically what you're gonna be doing is laying the wet piece out over this towel. And now here's my favorite step in the entire process. This is the burrito. So now what you wanna do is roll the towel and the knitted piece together. So we're just rolling it all together. So there's basically a towel in between each layer of the knitted piece. I just roll it all the way to the end. It looks like a gigantic towel burrito. And now what you wanna do is either stand on the towel, you wanna to put as much weight on this burrito as possible. So I just use my knees. I basically kneel on the burrito and I'll just move my knees across the towel burrito back and forth and back and forth. And what you're doing is basically squeezing all of the extra excess moisture out of the knitted piece and into your towel. So once I feel like I'm done, <laughs> the towel, it probably feels pretty wet. Um, you wanna unroll everything and your knitted piece should actually feel pretty close to being dry. Um, and that's what we want. We just don't want this like wet, soppy knitted piece. Um, the main reason is much like our hair, um, animal hair is very fragile when it's wet. So you don't want to handle it too much while it's wet and you really want to get it dry as quickly as possible. So actually with that being said, I also do, I mean, these are a lot of considerations, which of course you don't have to do, but just some recommendations and some something from experience. Um, you want to try and find a dry day to do this. I used to live in New York City where it could be very, very humid and it makes a difference. If I tried doing this on a day where it's very humid, it could take two or three days for the piece to finally dry where I feel like I don't feel any more moisture. Um, on a dry day, it could probably take a day. So it does make a difference. And if you do have the option, I would definitely wait for a drier day uh, to do this. Anyway, moving on. So now what you wanna do is take another towel, a white one preferably, and you just wanna lay the, the knitted piece out flat. And you want to lay it 
in the way that you want it to dry. And that's why they always say lay flat to dry because it is going to end up the way you lay it out. So for example, let's say you've laid out uh, like a pullover or a cardigan with sleeves and you decide, oh, well, it's just, it's taking up too much room. You know, the sleeves are hanging out and you fold them in and you leave it that way to dry, you're gonna have fold marks right there. So it's gonna dry exactly the way you leave it. So you wanna flatten it out, you wanna get all the creases out um, as much as possible. You can always steam once uh, it's been dried. Um, but I find that you really want to um, get it as flat and as pristine as possible during this process. Um, it just makes it a lot easier, it makes life a lot easier. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just sort of spreading out the edges of the scarf. I wanna make sure that um, it's, you know, it's not too wavy or I don't have a lot of uh, lumps or bumps in the towel, which can affect you know, like the texturing on the knitted piece. And um, I kind of babysit it. So over the next few hours, I just check on it. I make sure, you know, the edges haven't come in because that's what will happen as the piece is drying. It's going to start to, you know, come in or whatever. And I just kind of stretch it out and lay it uh, back out flat. Um, I also flip it over. And at this point, if you feel like maybe the towel underneath is too damp, you can switch out the towel, flip it over, uh, let it continue drying. And then you'll know it's completely dry. Again, it's much like your hair when there's no coolness to the touch. So it can feel dry, but it can still feel kind of cool to the touch. There's still moisture in there and you want to just leave it until there's no coolness to the touch. So that is essentially how you do it. And again, you know, as you're doing this, you just don't want to introduce any agitation into the piece. You want to just, you know, kit, treat it with kid gloves. You want to be really gentle with it and you really want to get as much moisture out of it as possible. That burrito step is very, very important. So that's how you could hand wash uh, a knit at home. Next, I do want to talk about pilling and Pilling will happen in most knits. It's just part of the characteristic of animal fibers, again, because the fibers have scales on them, they catch on each other, and um, pilling is like this very kind of small, concentrated form of felting. That's what those little balls are. They're little felted balls, basically. So you'll notice that felting will happen on uh, poorer quality items. So. I purchased a bunch of cashmere sweaters from Nordstrom, which I love. They were 100% cashmere, but they were very inexpensive. I think they were less than $100. And for cashmere, that's inexpensive. And I just knew that they were probably like thin, that they were gonna be lightweight, and that they were probably gonna pill very, very easily. Because again, they probably um, kept a lot of the shorter uh, staple length hairs in there, and those are what stick up and pill. If you have the longer hairs, it's like it stays in the yarn fiber and it stays woven in, and it's not going to like stick up and start pilling. So this is one of the Nordstrom sweaters that I was just mentioning. So it's super soft, it's great. I love that it's lightweight. Um, I wear it all the time, but it pills like a, like a crazy, like a crazy pilly sweater. So here, can you see? So I do try and stay on top of this. I do try and uh, shave it down um, or cut off these pill balls as much as possible. So pilling happens basically, you know, from like the agitation, like the, the friction, if you will, and probably heat too, <laughs> when there's a lot of friction. Um, so you'll find pilling in those like high traffic areas, like your underarms, or if you're always carrying like a shoulder bag, you'll see it on your shoulder. So that's why you get it in those specific areas and just not all over evenly. So there are a ton of ways to get rid of uh, the pilling on your sweater. Uh, you can use an electric shaver. If you have an electric shaver or that's your preference, um, I would definitely get one that you plug in instead of the ones that are battery operated or rechargeable because you wanna make sure that the spinning is uh, like up to snuff. Basically, if you have one that's battery operated and your batteries start to get weak, it's not gonna spin as quickly and that's when you may kind of like catch on to the pills or it just doesn't remove the pilling that well and you just find yourself kind of replacing those batteries quite often. So if you can find one that plugs in, I definitely recommend that over the battery ones. Now, I personally like ones uh, where you can like use like a little bit of a, like a hand shaver. So my favorite tool is called the Gleaner and it has two ends. So this end is actually a lint brush. So this is great if you wanna kind of clean up your, clean up your overcoat or whatever. So that's what this side is for. The other side is like, it's called I believe like a sweater stone. It is this wire covered 
stone, essentially. And this wire, I mean, you can see I'm running my finger over it, so it's not sharp or anything, but it's um, tacky. There's like a tackiness to it. So that's what picks up the pills and removes them. And the caging of it is kind of what catches the little pills. So here you see me removing the pilling off of this uh, camel sweater. And then all of the pilling just sort of ends up on this sweater stone area and you just pluck it off um, and throw it away. So that's how you can remove pilling. Of course, you can sit there and pick it off, which is what I love to do in school. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I had a sweater with pilling, I would just sit there and kind of just remove everything um, by hand. Of course, you can do that if you're bored. Um, but I like using the sweater stone because it's just, it's faster and it's a little bit cleaner. So to toot my own horn a little bit, just humor me. <laughs> this is my scarf again. And this is a scarf that I wore pretty much nonstop for like two winter seasons now. And I just washed it and everything. I haven't shaved it. I haven't plucked any pills off of it. I haven't uh, take an electric shaver to it or anything. And I made sure obviously that I used the best fiber that I could uh, when I manufactured these. And you can see there's no pilling whatsoever. And again, this is 70% wool, 30% cashmere. And it just has held up beautifully, absolutely beautifully. So that is the sign of a really like high quality knit. And then in terms of storing your knitwear, I don't have a lot to say in this area, except that I don't like to put my knits away in like a plastic bin or put them in like those plastic storage bags um, because you know, these are animal fibers, they do need to breathe. So as you can see here, I just leave my knits out all year round on a shelf. And even before I had the shelving, I always had my knits out on some sort of shelving um, or inside a cabinet at most. That's like the most kind of closed off I would keep it. But I would stay away from keeping them in too much uh, plastic because it's, it's just gonna kind of keep the moisture in. They'll probably end up smelling a little musty, if you will. If you do, let's say that's the only way you can store them. You need to get them out of the way. You wanna protect them maybe from, I don't know, critters or whatever. Um, just leave the bag open like a little bit you know, if you use like one of those plastic bags, just leave it open a little bit. Or if you use a plastic bin, maybe like leave one of the corners up a little bit, just, just to give it a little bit of air. These uh, natural fibers really do like to breathe a little bit. So I think that's it. I think those are all the points that I wanted to touch on. Please let me know if you have any questions down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.